Audiobook novel title. Asterisk reincarnated with a system in a cultivation world part 001b. Author Jbu. Chapters. 01 to 388. Source web novel. Audiobook maker. Zephyr Audiobook. Plot synopsis. Fate is peculiar. Of all the people in the world, why choose me to be transported to another realm? And what is its grand design? To entertain by bestowing upon me a system? Nevertheless, I remain unperturbed. The previous owner of this body was a cripple, scorned and disregarded. But now, with my system, I can turn the tables. Young masters, step aside. Princes, geniuses, mere trifles. My system renders them insignificant. I am aware that I am not the greatest. Yet fate has granted me a cheat system and I shan't squander it. I am determined to conquer this world, come what may. Fate has compelled me on this path, and if ruin follows in my wake, so be it. They had weapons of their own, and it was no time for me to start the Blue Dragon Spear art. I needed to react immediately. I clashed with the weapons. My spear held off a sword here and an axe there. Sparks flew in the air. My arms pained whenever something hard hit the spear. I had to face the brunt of the attack, and my muscles were not having it. The middle-aged man jumped at me with his fists clamped together. He was ready to hit me on my head, and if that hit, I would probably be knocked out. I moved to the side immediately, and that was a mistake that cost me dearly. Slam! A hammer hit me in the side almost the second I moved to the side. It was like they were anticipating my movement. I flew to the side, almost falling off the ring. But the iron body art was showing its greatness now. There was pain, but my skin was like metal. Took the attack and stayed whole. I was not knocked out or half dead. I stood up on my shaking knees. The fight was getting to me. This was the first time that there was so many people just running towards me. Ready to kill me. I could not face them all on my own. I needed to separate them like I did the old man. I needed to finish them one by one if I wanted to win. I knew that Chi would be instrumental in my win. I circulated it according to the blue dragon art. They left me for a few seconds, and these seconds were precious. I started getting ready for the second stroke of the art. One of the men, this one thin and limber, was in the air, falling towards me. By the time that he was near me, I jumped up as well, coming to the same height as him. But unlike him, I had a spear. He couldn't reach me, but I could. I thrust the spear, and this time it connected. Splurt. Blood fell out of where the spear connected. It was just a graze at the side, but it was enough to make my stomach turn. This was the first time that I had injured someone like this. I forced my stomach to settle down. I could not take a revolt of my own senses right now. The thin man fell onto the ground, and I kicked him. Kicked him hard. The strength stat must have also applied to my legs. The thin man fell out of the ring as he flew out. I looked at the others. Looks like you are right about one thing. All of you need to gang up to have a chance to win. You were right to be cautious of me. But I am not going to be merciful. I said as I spat out a little blood from my mouth. It must have come after that hammer struck me. I raised my hand. Seven fingers with my spear tucked under my arm. Two gone. Seven of you remain. I smiled. Chapter 23 Victory or Defeat Please vote with Power Stones to support the novel. If you like the novel so far, leave a comment and a review. Your opinion is important, and if there is anything that you want to fix, then go ahead and give a review. You damned brat. I really underestimated you. But do you think that taking care of two people would finish the fight like that? You are right. Seven of us remain. And that means that we will be more cautious than ever, and we will work together to try and defeat you. You should stop letting your mouth run so wild, lest it offend the wrong people. The middle-aged man grinned. Around him, the other men also nodded. They looked at me with frightening faces and brandished their weapon. All of them formed a line and started closing in on me. By the time they got to me, I jumped and quickly landed on the other side. But there was someone anticipating that and he already got to where I landed. I quickly used my spear to block his blade. I took a few steps back to stabilize myself. Then, I thrust the spear forward and then let it glide to the side following wherever the man was running off to. He blocked the spear with his blade, and I took this as an opportunity to move forward. You forget that there are seven of us. A voice came from behind my back. As I was taking care of this one man, I forgot about the rest. I was too concentrated on what had happened in front of me. 
I ducked, feeling that there was something that was going to hit me on the head. I was right. Above me, I could hear a gigantic whoosh. If that had hit me, then I would probably land in a coma. Each and every one of the attacks that these men made also had chi laced within them, and that made these attacks painful and stronger than they were supposed to be. I planted the spear's tail on the ground and used it as a pole to turn around quickly. I was surrounded, and this time I had nowhere to just jump. I had to fight against all of them at once. I had to split my mind and pay equal attention to all of them. I had no choice. If they were not going to show any mercy, I was not going to show any either. Any hesitation that might have been there in me disappeared. I gripped my spear, and the intuitive motion of the heaven-devouring art came into play. All the attacks of the enemy could be evaded as long as I knew where they were coming from. My mind no longer did the work. My body knew what to do to avoid any harm. I moved to the side, gracefully blocking and redirecting attacks. The blue dragon spear art was not that intuitive, but I knew what I had to do. I used the spear and started the third form of the art. This was the best that I could do without the shadow. I only learnt till the third form, and any other would need more practice. Luckily, the third attack was a sweep. It was a crowd attack. As the men all lunged for me, I directed immense amounts of chi to the spear and just let it glide in the air. I could smell fresh blood in the air, and then something hit me. It must have been the hammer that hit me the first time, because it felt so similar to me. I gnashed my teeth. I could bear the pain, but before I could turn around and see what had happened, someone kicked me again. I tumbled forward. I could not stabilize my footing and I fell. Number 256 is eliminated. A cold voice said out loud. I looked at them all with shock. This was not the outcome that I had expected. You are still a kid. You need more experience to match us. It was a good fight, but you need to battle more if you want to match all of us. I admit that you are more talented and probably have a better cultivation than we do. You have the better skills, but you have never used them in battle. That is what you did wrong. You never battled before. The middle-aged man said as he turned around, facing everyone that he was in cahoots with before. I looked down with shame. I could not believe that I lost. I thought that with the system and the overpowered skills that I got, I would win every battle that I faced in this life. I was wrong. I grew complacent and arrogant. I needed to go back and practice some more. It was time for me to set things right again. I needed to become the strongest, and I needed to put more work into this. I needed to clear this world, and I needed to do it right. Occasionally missing content, please report errors in time. Chapter 24 Two months later. Day after day, two months passed. The two months were much easier to go through than the three that I had to go through in isolation. I was in my room, looking at the mirror. My shirt was out and I was looking at my upper body. Scars riddled my upper chest. I was no longer the same naive boy that I was a few months ago. I was not the same anymore. Fighting changed me. I may not have killed, but taking blood changed something within me. I started caressing the ring on my finger. Over the last few weeks I spent a lot of time cultivating as well as fighting. Taking the advice of the system I fought a lot, trying to consolidate my cultivation. I reached the peak of the chi condensation realm within a month, and after that I only fought. The system said that the only way for me to increase my cultivation into the foundation establishment stage was to make a foundation establishment pill. I looked at the prices. Even the shoddiest quality pills cost more than a million spirit coins. I did not know what to do. The materials to make the pill myself cost about 5 million spirit coins if I wanted good quality pills. I saved up, painstakingly making batches of pills and selling them, I finally gathered enough for two sets of materials. System homepage. I said, username Gray Holton, the source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Cultivation name Pendragon Arthur. Title Young Master of the Pendragon Family. Level 8. Strength 35. Stamina 22. Agility 30. Cultivation Chi Condensation 9th Layer. Luck 20. Skills Heaven Devouring, Medium Proficiency. Blue Dragon Spear, Medium Proficiency. Iron Body, Medium Proficiency. Alchemy, Advanced Proficiency Chi Condensation Level. M Skill Points 5. Stat Points 25. The change in the alchemy window happened after I made a batch of pills. The system just refused to explain what it meant, and I did not care enough. I headed out of the room. I needed to make the pills and this was not the right place to do that. 
I wanted to get to the Foundation establishment stage before the Pendragon family gathering took place in a week. I needed to come first and show everyone that I was not a piece of trash like everyone treated me. I wanted to shut everyone up. I put my head down and left the estate. I went to the inn with a hat over me and locked the door behind me. Then, my hand twitched and a pill furnace appeared in front of me. This was another trick I learnt over the weeks. A simple button that I could designate to everyday things would deliver a command to the system. The fire appeared immediately, and the room started getting a little hot. I knew what I needed to do now. I needed to purify the materials and start condensing the pills. It was a very complicated process compared to the other pills that I made in the past. There seemed to be a general difference between pills made for the chi condensation realm and the foundation establishment realm. The herbs that I threw into the furnace vanished immediately after they crossed the threshold. They turned into viscous liquid instead. I carefully moderated the amount of chi that I sent into the fire. I needed the fire to be a little low, but not too low. I had to make sure that the herbs did not get burnt. One by one, thirteen different ingredients went into the pot. They were all separated within the furnace itself though. They had not yet merged together. For that, I learned another technique special to the skill book that I got from the system. I started performing a few hand signs. One by one, runes appeared on top of the furnace. The runes on the furnace also started glowing. I could feel a lot of my chi just getting spent so quickly. I had little time left before I ran out completely. Making a pill that was beyond my cultivation level was really a tough task. But this was a risk that I just had to take. I had no choice. The runes descended into the furnace. The separate essences of the herbs started merging together. The green and blue liquids became gold. An uncanny change. But I knew that this was good. It started coming together and split into five parts. The furnace started heating up as I sent in more chi into it. More runes started lighting up, and all of the five parts merged into five different pills. I cut off the chi supply and the furnace was immediately shut by a lid. I fell back with exhaustion and took a heavy breath. Finally, this is done. It better work. I said to myself. Ding. A sound came from the furnace and a sweet smell came from inside. My mouth twitched. It grew wide. It was a smile. I was smiling. I knew that I did it. I did it on my first try which I certainly did not expect. I had five foundation establishment pills and I could try and break through. I also knew that my pills were of much better quality than the million coin pill. Each one would probably fetch about five or six million, but I did not want to sell them now. I wanted to sell them after the martial gathering was over. I was not an idiot, and I did not want to face stronger opponents by giving them a chance to break through. I opened the pills, and with that, a golden hue came upon my face. I turned my hands and a jade box appeared in the palm of my hand from my spatial ring. I took the five pills within and put them in the box. I quickly closed the box lest the efficacy disappear. The furnace disappeared, and I was all alone in the room, with just the pills in my hand. I started thinking. Should I take one now, or should I wait for a moment? I was thinking. Ah, screw this. What could possibly happen? Chapter 25 Foundation Establishment Stage I took one of the pills and popped it into my mouth. I decided that waiting was not what I wanted right now. I needed to do things now and fast. I had three days left. The pill melted in my mouth and went through my throat like water. It met no intrusion. The moment that it entered my stomach, I started a cycle of the heaven-devouring art. Vast amounts of chi suddenly started aswalting my body. I severely underestimated the amount of chi that one of these pills had. Even though I had depleted most of the chi that I had in my body, my body still knew that there was too much within itself. My body started heating up, and I knew that there was something wrong. My veins started bulging. They looked like they were about to burst. My eyes were bloodshot. I knew that because I faced a mirror. Just looking at myself, I thought I saw a dead man. There were far too many bad signs. I needed to resolve the amount of chi within my body, and fast. But there was only one place for the chi to go. That was the dantian that was at the center of my body. But this dantian that had formed a few weeks before was nothing more than the size of a walnut now. All this chi could not possibly fit there. Ding. System can offer a piece of advice. Although the dantian is small, there is a huge amount of chi that can be stored within there as long as the host knows how to. The system suddenly said, I looked up with astonishment. Now I had no choice but to try it out. I started pouring chi into my dantian, but as more chi went in, 
more qi flowed out. It did not stay within. I started trying to suppress the qi from flowing out. I tried to compress the qi so that it stayed inside. Beads of sweat formed on my forehead, and my eyebrows were perpetually frowning. I was full tilt on this, and a single mistake could very well cost me my life. Drop. My eyes flashed open with surprise. I looked within. My dantian was different, somehow. There was a change that I accidentally made, and it was the right one. I looked closely and saw that at the bottom of the dantian, there is a little drop of chi. That was the difference. The chi was liquid. It had a faint golden hint. And that single drop had far more chi within it than what formerly filled the whole dantian. I understood why people said that the difference between the foundation establishment stage and the qi condensation stage was immense. I started doing the same throughout. I started compressing the mana, trying to make the gaseous qi into a more condensed form. As the qi collided with each other, my fists clenched even more. This was a painful process because all of this was happening within my body. My internal organs started shaking with each collision. Drop. One more drop of qi fell into the dantian. This time, the process became much smoother. I took a deep breath. With a lot of the qi being condensed into the drops within the dantian, my body was not a raging mess anymore. I could start working more calmly with the qi within and try to completely change the qi into the new form. With every passing moment, more and more qi was stuffed into my dantian. My completion grew and I looked healthier than ever, that was for sure. Soon, my whole body was parched for qi. All of it was within the dantian, which was not even completely full. I was surprised that the single walnut-sized container could hold such an immense amount of energy within itself. But I knew that I was not done yet. I had not yet entered the foundation establishment stage completely. There was the second and more important segment remaining. I needed to cleanse my body now. I needed to wash my body with qi so that it would be suitable for cultivation. This was the part that I was most skeptical about. I already did something like this. When I first completed the cycle of heaven devouring law, I had to restructure my whole body. I hoped that this was different though. I really hoped that this was an entirely different method as well. Last time I was just knocked out for a whole day. I did not want that to repeat, and in the middle of the city above that without any protection. I started releasing the chi that I had within my dantian and let it flow into my body, making full cycles. I had to let every part of my body get strengthened with qi. It was a comfortable process, unlike the heaven-devouring art. That was a good difference. I could feel my body getting a little sturdier by the minute. I could feel the organs within my body stabilizing from all the shaking that happened earlier. Hell, even my skin felt tougher than before. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Ping. Congratulations. Host has entered the foundation establishment stage the system said. This confirmed things. I had entered the foundation establishment stage, and that meant that I was officially in competition for the title. I had to win now. I had no one else to blame if I lost. The system gave me all the pieces that I needed. All I had to do was play them right. System homepage. I muttered. Username Gray Holton. Cultivation name Pendragon Arthur. Title Young Master of the Pendragon Family. Level 8. Strength 45. Stamina 32. Agility 40. Cultivation Foundation Establishment First Layer. Luck 20. Skills Heaven Devouring, Medium Proficiency. Blue Dragon Spear, Medium Proficiency. Iron Body, Medium Proficiency. Alchemy, Basic Proficiency Foundation Establishment Level. Skill Points 5. Stat Points 25. Chapter 26 Just in Time. Pendragon Family Training Grounds. Hundreds of people were standing around a makeshift arena that was created. There were two in the arena, fighting. Clangs of their swords clashing could be heard throughout the ground. Everyone looked at the arena with a bated breath. They were awaiting the result. A man and a woman fighting it out. The man made one wrong move and he faced defeat. Pendragon Yen wins. She shall proceed to the next round. Next, number three, Pendragon Zhang, and number four, Pendragon Kuin shall enter the ring. An old man said. It was quite obvious that this was the competition of the Pendragon family, to select who was going to the martial gathering. Not everyone could attend this, and only three from the Pendragon family would have the opportunity. Pendragon Kuin got onto the arena and looked at Pendragon Zhang, a thin man who looked at Pendragon Kuin with apprehension and fear. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. 
You should just give up right now. It will save everyone some time. Pandragon Kun smiled. I am sorry, but I practiced so much for this. I took a lot of time, and my parents invested in a lot of resources. I have to try, young master. I am forced to try. The poor man said with tears in his eyes. He brandished his sword and pointed it towards Pendragon Zun. I see that you chose wrong. This is a martial fight and swords do not have eyes. I am afraid that if something does happen to you, it is the fault of your own uselessness. Pendragon Kuin smiled wickedly and dashed forward. Heaven returning strike. He cried out and a blue glow covered his sword. He is in the peak of the Qi condensation stage. Someone gasped from the audience. Congratulations, second elder. You are truly lucky to have two talented sons. You are truly the future of the Pendragon family. We will have to rely upon you in the future. A few people in the front rows started praising the father. Meanwhile, on the stage it was simply carnage. Blood flew everywhere. The strike was too much for the poor kid to handle. The boy could barely escape with his life, but his left hand was not so lucky. His eyes were open with shock, and he looked at Pendragon Kuin with a trembling face. You did not expect me to show mercy just because you helped me out a little during the last few years, did you? I have no reason to keep a useless piece of shit like you around when you cannot even follow orders. Pendragon Kuhn sneered. He then looked at the judge who was standing at the side. Pendragon Kuhn wins. Pendragon Zhang loses out of capacitance. He has forfeited his right to continue. Take him to the infirmary. Next, number five, Pendragon Xian and number six, Pendragon Dongmei, enter the stage. The judge said. Immediately, the crowd went silent. A handsome-looking man and a shaking girl entered the stage. The girl immediately bowed to Pendragon Exion. Brother Exion, I know the immensity of the heavens, and I know that me fighting will just waste everyone's time. I do not want to waste your time, or the time of the esteemed elders who await the result of the match. I forfeit, she said with clenched fists. Pendragon Exion looked at this and smiled. Junior sister, you are not wrong and you have thought well. I hope that your path in the future is a well-paved one. Pendragon Exion smiled as he got off the stage. Pendragon Dongmei also got off the stage with tears in her eyes. She did not like what she just did even one bit. All around her people looked with pity. She was just unlucky to get paired with the most powerful opponent possible. Pendragon Exion wins this round. Next, we have Pendragon. Fights went on and people won and lost. There were sobs everywhere and cheers elsewhere. Winds brought pride and happiness, and their opponents left the grounds without any face to show themselves to. This was the heartless circumstance. There were many from the young generation, but only those from the main family were allowed to continue. They were the only ones who were allowed to represent the Pendragon family in such a prestigious gathering of the entire city. Everyone knew who would win though. Everyone was sure that who would even be in the top three. Isn't it obvious? Pendragon Exion, Pendragon Kuin, and the daughter of the first elder, Pendragon Hung. No one else stands a chance. I heard that Pendragon Exion and Pendragon Hung had even broken through to the foundation establishment stage. With these two helming the Pendragon family, we have a big chance of winning this martial gathering. One person said, beaming as he spoke about them, Are you an idiot? Don't just say that out loud. Who knows how many people from the foundation establishment stage are in other families. If you say this, and for some reason or the other, they lose, they will direct their anger on you. His friend chided him. The judge looked around. The seventh fight had just ended. Number 15, Pendragon Ean, and number 16, Pendragon Arthur. He said calmly. The people looked around. They knew about the idiot son. Everyone did. They were surprised that he was even called out at all. Pendragon Ean, a petite girl with a sword in her hands, walked up to the stage. But Pendragon Arthur did not. He was nowhere to be seen. Pendragon Arthur? Where is he? Does he intend to waste out time? The judge said coldly, clearly irritated. He is an idiot, esteemed senior. He is clearly wasting all our time. Pendragon Kuin shouted from where he stood. This is the final call for Pendragon Arthur. If he does not come, then it is an automatic disqualification, and he shall be punished for wasting out time. The judge shochued. Why all the fuss? I am here. Forgive me for my late appearance. I was just caught up with something. A sound came from the edge. Who else was it but me? 
A smile crept up in my face. The perfect entrance. Chapter 27 Destroying the Opponent I was late. When I woke up, I realized that not one, not two, but three whole days had passed. It was the day of the Pendragon family gathering, and I had to make haste or I would lose my opportunity to participate in the martial gathering completely. And luckily, by the time I had arrived, they were just calling my name. After I announced myself, everyone looked at me with gazes of derision. They did not like me one bit. Pendragon Kuin took this moment to put me in deeper trouble. He got up and started shouting. Pendragon Arthur, do you have no respect for the elders? You have wasted their time. You should apologize and forfeit immediately, he shouted. I smiled in response. Forgive me, elders. I was held back because of my breakthrough. Or else I would certainly be here on time, I said. Breakthrough? Stop lying. All of us know that you are not capable of cultivating. Inculding you in the participant role was just a formality. Wasting our time is one matter, but lying to us is another. You should be taken to the punishment hall for the offenses that you are committing. The judge looked at me with cold eyes. I scanned the crowd. I found my father, who looked at me. He nodded at me and I nodded back. With this, I had the permission of my father as well. I jumped from where I stood. Immediately, I landed on the arena, which was a full 300 meters away from where I stood. This was the change that the foundation establishment stage had. The crowd shut up immediately. They were shocked still. They looked at me with eyes of confusion. Even the judge could not believe his eyes. This was not something any ordinary cultivator in the chi cultivation realm could do. I think we should start the match. We should not waste any more time. I smiled. Yes, we should start the match. The judge said, stuttering. The moment he said that, my figure flickered. A sword appeared in my hands, and I appeared behind Pendragonine. The sword touched her neck before she could even move. You lost. Any more movement and you will lose your life. Just yield. I said coldly. The sword was because I did not want to show all of my trump cards in the first round. These were left for dealing with Pendragon Exion. He probably entered the foundation establishment stage much before me so he had more chi than me. I needed to deal with him more than anyone else. I yield. Pendragon Ean said, shaking. She did not expect me to move at such fast speeds and take care of her in an instant. The battle is over. Pendragon Arthur wins. He shall proceed to the next round. The judge announced, but he was not convinced. He looked at the scene with unblinking eyes, trying to find something wrong with it. I let go of the sword, catching it below with my other hand. I let her go and walked away. It was a good fight, junior sister, but you will need more practice. I smiled as I got off the ring. I headed over to where my father and mother were sitting. They were probably worried sick about where I was the last three days. Even I did not expect to just fall asleep like that. It took longer than even the restructuring that happened in the cave five months ago. My father took one look at me, and his eyes lit up. You are a real genius. Cannot believe it. I can sense that your body has a foundation within it. You have reached the foundation establishment stage. I just left you for two months and you reached the foundation establishment stage. This is a speed that even the royal capital has never seen before. You really are the son of I mean, my son. Your father and mother are proud. He said smiling. I knew something was wrong. The way that he slipped up, he said something truly wrong. I heard rumors of this elsewhere in the city, and in the elder council when I first arrived, but hearing it from father confirmed it. I was probably not my father's son. I was probably adopted. The feelings that I had for the two of them stemmed from the memories that I got from this body. The true Pendragon Arthur died thinking his parents were his real parents. I shook my head. I needed to deal with this later. I had more important things on hand right now. Father, I need to try and win the martial gathering. With the guidance of the great master who saved me the last time, and the arts that he gave me, I think that I have a chance. What realm is Pendragon Exion in? He is probably going to be my toughest opponent. I asked. Once again, you underestimate everyone else. You may have gotten to the foundation establishment stage through sheer speed, but your cultivation is probably not stabilized enough. You should have told me that you got here so I would have helped you build a proper and solid foundation. But never mind that. We cannot change anything. Just try your best. No one expects you to win the Pendragon family gathering, let alone the martial gathering. It is going to be tough. You should just try your best not to lose against Pendragon Kuin and the others. 
Opponents in the Foundation Establishment stage are beyond you. Pendragon Chin shook his head. I could not believe it. My own father did not believe in me and did not want to support me in my conquest. This was outrageous. Little did he know the amount of practice that I had in the Colosseum. Chapter 28 Cruising Through There was nothing that I could do though. I had no choice but to show everyone that I was truly capable. I sat down in one of the seats and looked at the arena calmly. Everyone's eyes were on me though. They looked at me fervently, not able to understand what just happened a few minutes before. The fight that happened was the fastest, except for the surrenders that had occurred against Pendragon Exion and Pendragon Hung. But even then, the fight happened too fast. Little did they all know how much effort I put into my training. Whether it be the fighting or the cultivation, I put in as much effort in these two months as some put over two years. The second round will be starting now. Pendragon Kuin and Pendragon Yen enter the stage. The judge called out. The woman who won the first round, as well as Pendragon Kuin, entered the ring. They looked at each other. I hope that senior brother will go easy on me. The woman smiled as she took out her sword from her sleeve, pointing it at Pendragon Kuin. Pendragon Kuin smiled. You jest, junior sister, but you are much stronger than me. He also took out a sword and pointed it at Pendragon Yen. Start! The judge called out and immediately, the two of them started moving at each other. The movements that Pendragon Yen made looked immensely profound. Her feet looked like they were on clouds. The hidden cloud step. She managed to achieve mastery of the hidden cloud step. A genius! A commentator shouted with shock and awe. Pendragon Kuin matched the same with ease. He jumped up and evaded her pincer jab. Heaven returning strike! Pendragon Kuin shouted as he fell forward towards where Pendragon Yen was standing. She looked at the coming strike with a solemn look and raised her sword to defend. Clang! Pendragon Yen fell to one knee, blood dripping from her mouth. The attack may not have directly hit her, but the waves of chi that it caused, as well as the vibration caused her internal organs to shake. She coughed out blood as she retreated quickly. But I could not make sense of this fight at all. Why the hell is this idiot shouting out his attack for everyone to hear, and why did that woman not move to the side when the attack came from up there? They are all fools. This is a fool's gathering, this. It is just too funny. I shook my head as I laughed at what was going on. You should quit while you are ahead, junior sister. There is no shame in knowing when we are not strong enough. Swords and fists have no eyes. I am afraid that if you do not quit now, the same fate that fell on my previous opponent will fall on you. Pendragon Kuin said with a hint of condescension. He looked at her, taunting her. She bit her lip. I wondered what happened to the other opponent, but I guessed that it was something serious because it clearly shook Pendragon Yen. I forfeit, she said with a soft voice. The crowd cheered as Pendragon Kuin smiled. He got off the ring, smiling at his older brother. He then looked at me with an angry look. I shrugged in return. The rest of the matches went as planned. Pendragon Exion and Pendragon Hong, the two clear front runners for the title, went to the next round without any hitches. Their opponents gave up. I felt it a pity, since I did not even know what their signature moves and skills were. Pendragon Arthur, Pendragon Chio, enter the arena. The judge called out. The crowd looked at me with silence. They were waiting to see what was going to happen. I was a surprise to them. I was a surprise to everyone. No one expected me to go to the next round. I got up and walked to the stage. A man, about my age, but with eyes that seemed like they were a rat's, entered the ring with me. I did not expect you to come to the second round. It is truly a surprise. But this surprise ends here. You must have used some trick against Sister Ean, but that will not work on me. I know what your tricks are. You cannot sneak attack me like you did before. Pendragon Cho said as he pointed his sword at me. Why does everyone use swords? There is no change. No disruption to his monotony. I shook my head as I looked at the judge. Start. He called out. The moment he said that, a blade appeared in my hands. Pendragon Cho had pounced at me, aiming at my head. What are you after? My life? Isn't this wrong? You should aim elsewhere, senior brother. I said smiling. I moved to the side, avoiding his strike. He fumbled forward, but I did not attack him. It was time to play with him a little. He regained balance and looked at me. You coward. Face me head on. Be a man. He spat out. Coward? Be a man? Don't wake the slumbering dragon, you idiot. I said coldly. 
he touched a few sensitive topics that would anger anyone. Seeing me enraged, he ran towards me. His sword pointed straight at me, he roared. Chi flew into my sword, and I raised my hand. I let the hand go, and the sword stroked down. Snap! The sword that Pendragon Cho was holding snapped into two. But my sword did not stop there. I turned my wrist, and the sword rose sharply, stopping just an inch beneath his chin. Yield now, or you will have a scar on your pitiful face. I said coldly. Two yield. He stammered. I took my sword back, and he fell on his back, looking at me with shock. He did not believe what he had just seen. Pendragon Arthur wins. The judge said after a long pause. The crowd went silent. They were obviously not on my side. They did not want to cheer for me. They just looked at what happened with stupor. I ignored them and walked back to my seat. Chapter 29 Fighting with Pendragon Hung Pendragon Exion looked at me with shock. He was talking to Pendragon Kuin about something, and he raised his eyebrows when Pendragon Kuin pointed at me. I frowned, but I laid back regardless. He was just another obstacle in my way. The third round shall start now. Pendragon Kuin and Pendragon Exion enter the stage. The judge called out. I looked at this with amusement. Brother pitted against brother. I knew what would happen, but it was still a little interesting to watch. Now, one of them would be forced to battle for Thrid Place, and it sure as hell was not Pendragon Exion. The two brothers got onto the ring. I forfeit, Pendragon Kuin said. The judge nodded and called that out. The two brothers went back down and sat next to each other. Then, they continued talking to each other about something. I shook my head and sent some chi to my spatial ring. A spear appeared in my hands which was beneath my chair. No one saw me use the spatial ring so that secret was still safe. Pendragon Hung and Pendragon Arthur enter the stage. The judge said, I got up with the spear in my hand. I slowly went up the stage. My father looked at me with confusion. He did not understand where the spear came from. The others might think that he brought it here, but he was not in the know. Opposite to me, a beautiful girl stood tall and strong. She looked at me with a cold glance. Junior brother, I am truly surprised that you got so far. But this is where your journey ends. I am in the foundation building stage while you started cultivating for a mere few months. Just quit so that I can try and beat Pendragon Exion with my full power. She said coldly. While you do think that you need your full power to beat him, I am in the opinion that I also should have the chance to teach him a lesson. I am afraid that I cannot concede to you. I shook my head. Why do you want to waste everyone's time? You are even using a spear. You have basically given up. What you are doing is just a waste of the elder's time. She said. Enough talking. We should start the match. I said as I pointed my spear towards her. The judge sighed. Start. Immediately, a sword appeared in her hands. You have a spatial ring. I cried out in shock. I am the daughter of the first elder. Of course, I have a spatial ring. She sneered. She ran towards me with the sword. Immediately, my instincts kicked in. I used my spear to block her moves. She was fast and nimble, but I got an incredible increase in my stats ever since I increased my cultivation to the foundation establishment stage. You are just trying to stall. She shouted as a giant chi wave approached me. I looked at the upcoming attack calmly and swept it with my spear. The spear cut through the attack, giving me a sort of a shield from the wave. Chi passed over me and to my side, but it did not affect me. She looked at this with shock. Heaven returning strike, she cried out. Isn't that the same attack that Pendragon Kuin used? It seems that everyone in the Pendragon family has a limited number of skills to choose from, especially for the weapons. If that is the case, then I am going to be in luck. I smiled. All of the attacks that I have seen in the matches before would repeat themselves now. They would just be of higher power levels. Now that I knew what to expect, I moved accordingly. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. The sword was approaching me at a terrifying speed, but my spear was not lying around. The first attack of the blue dragon spear art. The spear pierced towards the sword, and both of them met each other. Clang. The sound of the two weapons colliding was loud and deafening, but the outcome was clear. Pendragon Hung took three steps back, looking at me with shock. You are in the foundation establishment stage as well, she cried with shock. Everyone looked at me with shock now. He is in the foundation establishment stage, but I thought that he could not even cultivate. 
It seems that Pendragon Chin has brought up a hidden tiger. To think that he would hide someone like this for so long. One person commented. The Pendragon family has three members of the younger generation in the foundation establishment stage. This is truly a surprise. Another exclaimed. I looked at them and shook my head. So I am no longer wasting your time? I asked, smiling. You jest, junior brother. If I had known this before, I would never have said this. But the battle is far from over. She said, changing her expression from shock to seriousness. She moved fast. Bits aringly fast. I could no longer see her clearly and could only sense her general position. Whiz, I moved to the side on instinct. A sword sliced past me. The sword was fast. Far too fast. I could not sense anything at all. I did not know where she was. I calmed myself. For this, I had the perfect attack. Third attack of the blue dragon spear art. As she was moving around the ring, my spear swept apart through the nine feet around me. It was bound to hit her once. And it did. Clang. Pendragon Hung used her sword to block the spear, but now I knew where she stood. I gripped the spear tight and pierced at where the spear had stopped. She could no longer dodge this move. I yield. She cried out. The moment she said that, I yanked the spear back. I looked at her. She looked weak. The speed that she just showed was probably at the expense of immense amounts of chi. She would probably have not been able to keep up for long. It was a good fight. I put my fists together. Pendragon Arthur wins. Chapter 30 In Danger My father rose up and looked at me with shock. His mouth was agape. I smiled at him, and then looked at Pendragon Exion, who was sitting on the other edge of the ring. Pendragon Kuin next to him was furious. With my victory, the people who would be sent to the martial gathering were all but confirmed. There was no way that Pendragon Kuin would win against Pendragon Hung, so he would be sitting this one completely out. The second elder, their father had an ugly face. He looked at me with anger and confusion. If both his children went to the martial gathering, then he would become the face of the Pendragon family. But now he was no longer that. We shall take a short break for the participants to recover themselves. The judge said and he got off the ring. With that, my place got swarmed. People from all over rushed to me, trying to take a look at this sudden reversal of the idiot young master. Young master, you must surely remember me. I helped you in my ahem shop the other year. You must surely remember our friendship. One person shouted. I looked at that man with a weird glance. I thought that this was the Pendragon family gathering. Why are there people from all over the city? I mused. It is because this is also a show of strength. To show the city that the Pendragon family is not weak. To show the city that there are people in the younger generation to take the city forward. I thought that you knew that when you just went and shocked everyone witless. My father took me by my arm and dragged me away from the crowd. Once we were in the corner, he looked at me coldly. Since the time you disappeared, you were different. I knew the moment since you were able to cultivate the old Pendragon Arthur was dead. But to think that you have changed so much. I was shocked enough to see that you were in the foundation establishment stage. But to think that you had such killer instincts. Are you the same Pendragon Arthur that I know? He asked me seriously. Father. I. Cut the act. I saw the spatial ring on your hand a long time ago. Do you really think that you can trick me? You do not remember much about your father. Do you? I did not spend all my life in this small city. I traveled the city, I was part of the army, and I sure as hell know when a kid is lying to me. Now tell me. Who is this master that gave you all these gifts? And what happened to you for you to change so much? He asked. I took a step back. Father, there are many things that I cannot explain. But one thing is true. I am no longer the same Pendragon Arthur of the past. I am different. I have changed. And not just because of the master who gave me this new life. This change would have happened regardless. I am a new person. As for the rest, I am honor-bound not to reveal anything to anyone. I am sorry, but this is an oath that I took. I said, baking half-truths into my words. You do not understand, do you? By doing all of this, you just put a damn target on your back. He shouted at me, his eyes filled with anger. A target on my back? What are you talking about, father? I asked, confused. It means there are people all over the city, all over the kingdom who were waiting for you to do something like this. They were all ready to kill you, and you just gave them a reason to. I hoped that you would stay the same idiot way that you were. 
just a fool living his life. But you just had to make something of yourself. Now, the enemies of your father will start hunting for you. He shook his head. But you are my father. I protested. Do you really believe that? You knew the moment that you heard it in the council. I brought you here and protected you. But I cannot do that forever. Clearly not. You have to grow stronger. Get to the Sientian realm at least. You have five years to get to the Sientian realm. After that, you are a dead man if you do not get there. I will let you participate in the martial gathering. After this, you need to go to the Sky Heavens sect. I will give you a letter. Once you enter the sect, the person who this letter is for, he will know that you have arrived. Just go there and get stronger. That is the only thing that you can do now. Pity. I have failed him. Pendragon Chen shook his head as he turned away. I looked at this scene with dumbfounded eyes. I could not believe my ears. I was clearly adopted, and my background was far more terrifying than I had intended. I also had a target behind my back. I slumped to the wall that I was near. I looked at the stage and the crowd that was talking about me and Pendragon Exion. They were making assumptions. I just looked at this and shook my head. What are you doing here, young one? You have a match in a few minutes, do you not? I heard an old voice behind me. I turned around to see the elder who guarded the building with the weapons that I had entered a few months ago. Elder! I stood up straight and greeted him. I am no elder. I am just a guard. And you are just a young one. What are you so sad about? Gosh, that Pendragon Chin. He never knew when to talk about what. Never mind all of that, boy. You should just focus on the match ahead. If you win, that is even better. Just focus on what is imminent. The old man said. I looked down, thinking about it. Then, I turned back to thank him. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Wait. Where did he go? In just a few seconds, he disappeared. Chapter 31 Against Pendragon Exion I quickly ran back to the crowd. The fight was going to start any minute now, and I had no time to look for a mysterious person. That was going to be for later. Now, I had to concentrate on the match itself. I took this opportunity to pop a pill into my mouth. It was a chi supplement pill that allowed me to recover any chi that I used before. With this, I could go back to my peak state before the match started. Pendragon Exion was lucky. His opponents forfeited every single match, and he had yet to fight at all. It was just so unfair that he had such privilege. If I had shown off my cultivation so proudly, then maybe I would also have the same treatment. Pendragon Arthur and Pendragon Exion the fight for the winner, and the representative of the Pendragon family in the martial gathering shall commence now. Enter the stage. The judge said. With this, the crowd went silent for a few moments. I got onto the stage, and opposite to me, Pendragon Exion stood, smiling at me. He had long hair which I always thought weird for a man. It made him look so feminine. He gave me a weird vibe like he was this witch in disguise. The moment that he smiled and looked at the crowd, the crowd cheered. Ben Rangsin. Beat this imposter. Beat him. One person shouted. I looked at this and frowned. His fan following was far more than mine. That much was apparent. But to think that they would call me an imposter? Wasn't this too much? Junior brother. I appreciate that you have come this far. But it is time that your journey shall end. Although you have entered the foundation establishment stage, it is very much apparent that you have not stabilized your cultivation. There are many parts of your style that seem to course, too rough and unrefined. You are forcing yourself in many of the attacks. You are no match for me. I suggest that you end the fight here, or you shall be the one to suffer. Pendragon Exion said as he smiled. Nothing can be set in concrete. After all, there are many moves of mine that you have yet to see truly. And those moves are much, much more powerful than the last. I smiled back. Let the fight start. The judge said as he retreated. With that, I quickly moved. I sensed danger immediately so I took a few steps back. And I was right. Pendragon Exion reappeared just a few inches from where I stood with a sword in his hands. Look like you are also a sword person. I chuckled. I gripped my spear and jumped to the other side of the ring. I wanted to put as much distance between me and him as possible. That was the most advantageous position for me. I readied myself, and my spear started moving. Pendragon Exion was fast. He covered the gap between me and him within seconds, but this time, I was prepared for him. My spear flew towards his neck. He twisted his wrist, barely defending. 
He then stepped back and unleashed a barrage of attacks. I started twirling my spear to defend against them. Heaven returning strike, he shouted. I felt a tingling sensation at the back. Something dangerous was coming. I skid to the side, and then I saw what had happened. Pendragon Exion was not equal to me in power. He was much, much more powerful than me. His sword, the attack, was strong enough to put a dent on the ground. I looked at this with shock. To think that after so much hard work, I was still not strong enough. But the fight was not over yet. I had to move fast and try to win. I could not give up now. I had to give myself a chance. Chi flew through my hand into the spear. Blue dragon spear art. First strike. All of a sudden, a blue halo appeared around me. Everyone could hear the growl of a dragon come from the spear, and a faint image of the majestic beast appeared above me. Even Pendragon Exion looked at this with a stunned face. This was the strike that I was most proficient with, and the one strike that I could unleash the maximum potential from. He has achieved mastery of this art. Where did he learn it? An old man at the front rows of the stage shouted with shock. I recognized him. He was one of the elders. But that was not my concern. I thrust my spear forward, straight at Pendragon Exion. But Pendragon Exion did not dodge. Instead, he unleashed his own attack. Swan Feather Sword, he shouted. I felt a gust of wind all of a sudden. I could see that he also achieved a mastery of his own attack, and this one was a more gentle sword. My spear felt soft, and it slowly halted right before Pendragon Exion. It refused to go any further. How did you do that? I was confused. I quickly took back the spear and took a defensive stance. Like I told you, junior brother, I am not someone you can handle. Although you have shown that you are capable of so much, you are not capable of defeating me right now. It is just not possible as of yet. He smiled as he approached me. Blue dragon spear art. Second strike. The spear glided and it was about to strike his neck. But then, his sword flew up and it started circling the spear, barely touching it at the shaft head. The spear slowed once more. It was just uncanny. The spear ground to a halt once more. Pendragon Exion disappeared from where he stood, and his sword reappeared right in front of my eyes. I quickly let go of the spear and ducked, barely escaping the sword. But the sword still turned and scraped my shoulder. The pain was manageable and no blood came out. This was the result of the iron body art. I took the spear back into my hands and rolled to the other side of the ring. I looked at him apprehensively. He's strong. I whispered. Chapter 32 Blue Dragon Sails Through the Heavens I coughed a little. It had been a few minutes since I was backed into corner and Pendragon Exion unleashed a barrage of attacks. It was just impossible to defend completely. A few slipped past my defense, and my skin started to tear. I had a strong suspicion that his weapon was somehow much better than mine, because my spear was also getting chipped away at. If it got any more blunt, I could very well throw the game away right now. I shook my head and steeled myself. Blue Dragon Spear Art, Fourth Strike. The third strike was not efficient. It was only for crowd control. Right now, I needed to take care of him with the strongest attack that I knew. I needed to use the fourth strike. After weeks of painstaking practice and following the shadow of the system, I was able to master the fourth strike of the Blue Dragon Spear Art. It was different. Unlike other attacks prior, the fourth strike bordered on the impossible and the mystical. While it was a cultivation world, the fact that I could use my spear as a dragon was beyond me. I pulled back my spear and looked at him. He did not even have a scratch on his face. He smiled as he looked at me with those eyes of contempt, like he had already won the match. That pompous attitude gave me all the motivation I needed. A huge wave of chi left my dantian and raced through to the spear. I raised the spear high and did the most stupid thing possible if there was no context. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Blue Dragon Spear Art. Fourth Form. Divinity Reborn. Blue Dragon Sails Through the Heavens. I shouted out loud. The shouting part was very clearly engraved in my memories of the skill. I did not understand it, but I had to follow it. The spear growled. I let go of the spear, and it was like the spear had a mind of its own. Around the spear, my chi formed a protective layer around it, giving it the shape of a blue dragon. The dragon roared, and even I suddenly knelt at the immense pressure that my own attack gave me. I looked in the other direction, and Pendragon Exion was also kneeling. He could not handle the pressure that the spear gave him. 
The dragon roared at him as it flew towards his head. Pendragon Exion could not even raise his sword. He was incapacitated. He looked up with a different face now. One of fear. If this attack connected, then he would probably lose his life. At that exact moment, I felt that the spear connected. Pendragon Exion was no longer visible. Neither was the spear. At the point of contact, all I could see was a dust cloud. But it did not hit Pendragon Exion. I knew that. The spear hit something hard. I could feel it even though I no longer held it. I looked there with curiosity, flying towards the spear. The dust settled, and I saw what happened. Pendragon Exion was still on the ground, stupefied, and the judge was holding the spear in his hands. But the judge was not unscathed. Drops of blood fell from his hands to the ground. He looked at me with anger and shock. You fool! How dare you release such a killing strike against a peer? You must be punished for this insolence! The judge shouted. I smiled, raising my voice so that everyone could hear it. I said, But senior, Pendragon Exion had told me from the beginning that he was much more powerful than me. Even during the match, he said that I could not hold a candle against him. I had no choice but to use my strongest attack, and when I used that, he could not even defend. How was I to know that he was all talk and no action? The judge's mouth twitched. He was about to say something, when I saw a cloak, a cloak flying through the wind as someone landed on the ring. The judge immediately knelt down. I looked up to see who it was. It was my grandfather, Pendragon Hong. I knelt down immediately. Clan master! The elders and the rest of the Pendragon family watching from the sidelines knelt down. P. I was just casually looking at what the future of the clan was, and it looks like there is so much happening here. To think that my two grandchildren were so talented. Pendragon Arthur. Your spear is just wonderful. I must truly have a conversation with you about the spear art that you have used that stunned us all. It is quite apparent that he is the winner of the Pendragon family gathering. That is without question. It has been a good show that you have put for all of us. Now, Pendragon Arthur, Pendragon Chin, follow me. He said as he disappeared immediately. I just stood there, stunned. I had to explain to him how I came across this art now. This wasn't something that I was prepared for. Now, I had to unravel another story. What are you doing, Arthur? Come on. We have to go. Father will kill me if I bring you any later. I heard my father shout at me from the sidelines. I turned around and nodded to my father. As I walked towards him, I looked back. Pendragon Exion was still on the ground, with his eyes paralyzed with fear. I looked at Pendragon Kuin, who had gotten to the side of Pendragon Exion, trying to nudge him awake. Pendragon Kuin saw me looking at him and scowled. I smiled back. This time, I was the one with the smile of contempt. Chapter 33 Talk with Pendragon Hong My father dragged me to the same family pavilion that I went to when I first arrived. We went up the stairs, and I could see that the hall inside was completely empty. Whatever this was, it was supposed to be private. We entered the hall and saw that my grandfather was on the highest seat. My father looked at him and nodded. Oh my! We can finally talk. When was it that you were going to tell me that this boy was able to cultivate? Did you not think it appropriate, considering that our survival would very well be dependent on it? Pendragon Hong asked. Forgive me, father, but the truth is that even I did not know that he could cultivate until two months ago. The master who was passing by gave him a body that was capable of cultivating, and now he reached the foundation establishment stage in just five months. He could be capable of reaching the Sientian realm. It is not impossible, Pendragon Chen said. It took him a whole five months to cross a grand stage. Do you not think that it will take him more than five years to cross the four between? It will take him a long, long time to reach the Sientian realm, that is if he even will. You have signed his death sentence, for all intents and purposes. Pendragon Hong shook his head. I looked at this scene with confusion. Did they both forget that I was here? I didn't like the proceedings one bit. All of this reveal should have happened after the martial gathering was over. That way, I would be focused only on that, and not some freak trying to kill me for no reason at all. I shuddered just thinking about how my life would end. If he wins the martial gathering, then he will get the opportunity to enter the spirit jade pool. If he is able to use that energy properly, then he will be able to get to the mid-ranks of the foundation establishment stage. He will be allowed to go to the Sky Heavens sect. They will protect him until he grows strong enough. Pendragon Chien protested. The sect is waning. They will collapse in a few years. 
It is a pity. The royal capital has only enemies, and the rest of the world is falling prey to the throne. The world is truly an unfair one. But I did not call you here only to berate you. I have more important things to do. Pendragon Arthur will leave the city after the martial gathering. If I am not wrong. He has to. After the martial gathering is over, everyone will know that he is able to cultivate. I will send him to the Sky Heavens sect myself, and after that he will be the owner of his own destiny. But until then, he will be the face of the Pendragon family. And that means that he needs to get to the top. He needs to be in the top three. Pendragon Hong said. I nodded. I will do my best to win, grandfather. I said. Because we have three young ones in the foundation establishment, for the first time in the history of the family, our foundation is stronger than everyone else's. We are actually capable of getting more than one of the top eight spots. Hopefully we get three of them. But when I saw Pendragon Arthur today, I agreed with Pendragon Exion. Your techniques are coarse and forced. You are not completely in tune with the attacks that you use. And your spear. You are using the spear that all the disciples get once they come to the training grounds. Aren't you? He asked me. Yes, grandfather. I nodded. You idiot. If I hadn't seen that, then you would go to your doom in a week. Go to the training grounds building and ask the elder there for an earth-ranked weapon. You goddamn idiot. You are in the foundation establishment stage. A mortal rank weapon will not be able to handle your chi and power. He said. I nodded. That made sense. I knew that my spear was getting blunt, but I attributed that to Pendragon Exion's attacks. But if my own attacks were doing that to the spear, then that means that there was a chance that I could have finished that match even before the fourth strike of the Blue Dragon Spear Art. I nodded and turned around. Wait. I am not done yet. You young ones are so impatient. Wait a minute. I wanted to talk to you about the martial gathering as well. Do you not want to know who your opponents are and what you can expect from them? He stopped me. I turned around and beamed. That will be more precious than the weapon, grandfather. I nodded. Good. You at least have your priorities. Sit down. I'll show you how much trouble you are in. He said as he gestured. Pendragon Chien. You can leave now. He can do this without you. Pendragon Hong said, dismissing my father. Or rather, the person that I thought was my father. Pendragon Chien nodded and left the hall. I was all alone with Pendragon Hong. He laughed at me. Sit down. There is much to say. I will not talk about the small fry. Only the major clans are important. The Bai and Kai families. I will tell you their main abilities. They are most frightening. He said. M. I sat on the ground, looking intently at Pendragon Hong. So, the Bai family. They are most proficient in the... Chapter 34 Choosing a Weapon I walked back to the training grounds. It was completely empty now. Everyone had left by the time I came. I went to the building at the very end. The place where I could get a weapon. There was no guard though. The mysterious guard who gave me advice an hour ago was nowhere to be seen. It was quite a pity. I stopped at the entrance. I had no permission to go inside, and I did not want to be called an intruder. For such an important part of the family, there must be someone to guard it even in secret. What are you here for, child? My suspicions were confirmed when someone arrived from within the building. It was another old man, but this one was refined and looked his part more than the former. He looked experienced and powerful and exactly the same as the previous guard. You are the guard who spoke to me during the fight. Even when I came here last time, old Tian, right? I recognize your face. How did you change so much? What game are you playing with me? I jumped back. You are a very funny boy. No one cares about the guard. Why would they care about someone who just guards their manuals and their weapons? But you remember how he looks? I wonder why. Anyways, that fellow told me that you were coming. You want an earth-grade weapon, right? A spear? We have very few of those. You are going to have to manage that. I am sure you will. Old Tian smiled as he walked inside. That fellow? He just called the clan leader of the family that he worked for that fellow? Just what were his guts? No one could disrespect the leader like that. Not even the elders and the grand elders who were always in seclusion. This just made no sense. Who was this old Tion, and what was his place in the family? These thoughts just flew through my head as I stood there motionless. The weapon is not going to pick itself. Come on now. Old Tion's voice reverberated. I shook awake and ran inside. 
I went past the same weapons that I went through when I was choosing my first spear. But my selection was not out of these. I had to go upstairs to the second floor. This building had four floors which was quite rare in this city. The second floor was only for those in the foundation establishment and the core formation stages. They were considered royalty everywhere in the city. Uncle Du was in the core formation stage. I found out later, and I understood why everyone respected him more than me. That was all to change now, of course. Now he told you that you were getting an earth-ranked weapon, but he mispoke. You don't just get any earth-ranked weapon. You can only get an earth-ranked low-grade weapon. We cannot afford to just give high-grade stuff to mere foundation establishment stage children. Old Tian said, Anything is an improvement from what I have right now. I smiled as I entered the room that he guided me to. This was different than the one below. It was sparser. Fewer options, fewer weapons, it must have been because of the increased quality. I went to the spears section. Few was an overstatement. I saw exactly three spears here, and all of them were of different lengths compared to the one I used until now. This is just bullshit. I have four foundation establishment pills. They can't harm me that much. If I release one to the public, then I will be able to afford any weapon that I like. This selection is horrendous. I shook my head. Ping. System suggests that host select the spear in the middle. The system suddenly buzzed. I turned around to see what spear the system was suggesting. The spear was not as long as the one I was using. It was thicker and felt more stable. I held it in my hands. There was more weight to it as well. I tried pushing Chi into the spear. Then, I understood the difference between a human-ranked weapon and an earth-ranked weapon. The spear in my hands drank the Chi. It felt so much easier to flow my Chi through it, and the spear itself felt so much more powerful when there was Chi within it. It was sharper, stronger, and a much better spear. Damn it! I had the money. Why didn't I buy a spear before? I am so stupid. I shouted inside. Not outside, of course. I did not want anyone to know that I was an alchemist. Better keep that identity secret and mysterious for my security and to keep the profits higher. System. Why the hell do you want me to buy this spear though? I can buy a better spear outside, right? I asked the system. When the host was asked to select the spear, it was because it was the best choice out of the options to practice the blue dragon spear art. Now, host has come across a better alternative. The spear in the middle is more compatible with the blue dragon spear art. It has 90% compatibility, and user will be able to successfully perform even the fifth strike without problems. The system said. My eyes shone. The fifth strike, which I could never properly practice because the spear would always bend during training. If I could complete that one strike, then the martial gathering would be in my pocket. I nodded vigorously and grabbed the spear. I had chosen. I ran to the outside with the spear in my hands. Old Tian looked at it once and he smiled. Looks like you are lucky. The spear that you have chosen is low grade. Go ahead now. Practice with the spear. All of us want to see what you will do in the martial gathering. All of us want to see how far you will go. You are the dark horse after all. Haha. <laughs> Things are finally getting a little interesting after all this time. You know the way out. Old Tian laughed as he started walking away. Chapter 35 Back to the City I nodded and left the building. With a new spear in hand, I needed to get used to it. I needed to follow the system skill assist for this new spear and maybe master the fifth strike as well. But all of this was for later. I needed to go back into the city. After the martial gathering finishes, I will probably be going to some sect immediately. And I know that the sect will not be like a marketplace. I needed to convert all of my pills into money right now so that I could buy something that I could use. Maybe a few herbs that I could use to increase my cultivation as well. I walked towards the exit. People all over the estate looked at me. They looked at me with complicated expressions. Why wouldn't they? I was now the representative of the Pendragon family. From the idiot young master to the strongest young master, it was quite a jump in status. I shook my head chuckling. The guards at the entrance bowed to me as I left. I could hear them talk about me. Did you hear? Pendragon Arthur won the Pendragon family gathering. No one can believe it. Who would have thought that the things he did were just an act to disguise that he was preparing for something like this? Who would have though? I just cannot believe that I treated him like this. What is going to happen if he wants retribution? The guard was talking to the other. None of them seemed to understand that I could hear them. M. I walked through the streets, and when no one could immediately recognize me, 
I took a hat and cloak from my spatial ring and put it on. Then, I went to the Xiangxi auction house. It was better to go somewhere that would know how to treat you. I was stopped by the same attendant who greeted me the first time I came to the auction house. After that, I was a frequent visitor here, buying and selling ingredients and pills. The attendant bowed as she saw me. She let me in the waiting room and hurried inside to call the manager. For an alchemist like me, only the manager was high-ranked enough to deal with me. The manager returned with the attendant, and he looked at me. Master, it is always a pleasure to see you. Are you here to buy or to sell? He asked me, rubbing his hands together. I knew that he could smell a profit. When is the next auction going to happen? A grand auction? I asked. That, I am afraid, will take some time. The last time that you were here, you got lucky, master. You just came in time for the grand auction. But the normal auctions happen once a month. The next auction is just tomorrow. We put it tomorrow because there are many who want to prepare for the martial gathering and tomorrow is the best time to get the last resources. The manager said, then spread word. By the end of the day, everyone in the city should know that you have four foundation establishment pills that you are ready to sell. And these are not those stupid low-ranked foundation establishment pills. These are the real deal. I think that they will help increase chance of breakthrough my 60%. Maybe more. I said as I took out the jade box with the four pills within. Four foundation establishment pills. The manager's smile widened and his eyes widened. The joy in his face was apparent. How much do you think they will go for? I asked. Each one would go anywhere in between 5 and 10 million spirit coins. The manager nodded vigorously. Is there anything interesting tomorrow? I am inclined to join myself. I smiled. Well, please do not tell anyone else this, master. But there are a few interesting items that will arouse even the top clans to join. Aside from the not one, not two, but three whole skills that we are selling this time around, there is also the main item of the show a mythical sword that has been discovered in an expedition by an adventure team. It is beyond the rank of a heaven-ranked weapon, and no one knows how powerful it can be in an actual match. No one can gain its authority and permission. The manager said, Authority? These high-ranked weapons have their own will, do they? I see. This is also interesting. I think that I will be very inclined to get one of the items for myself. I smiled as I headed outside. Just at that moment, the system pinged. Ping. Host must urgently take two steps forward and five steps to the right to go to the shop with an incredible item within. The system buzzed. I nodded and I went to the shop that the system was so keen about. System suggests that host buy the jade trinket dangling on the side. With the carving of a dragon within it. The trinket has a vague draconic aura that can trigger the egg in host's possession. It will probably even catalyze the awaken and hatching of the life form within. The system said. My eyes sparkled. I waited for a long time, but nothing seemed to happen to the egg that the system made me buy. It seemed like a useless buy. Now that something seemed to happen, I was incensed. How much for this trinket? I asked the shopkeeper. You have a good eye, sir. It is just three bronze coins. The shopkeeper said. I did not bargain. I had no reason to. I gave him the money and snatched the trinket. Putting it inside my spatial ring, I ran back to the estate. I needed to try this immediately. It was just something too big to resist waiting. Chapter 36 Awakening the Egg I took off my cloak and hat and ran towards the estate. The guards let me pass without any problems. I ran to my courtyard. No one was there. I went into my room and took the egg from where I hid it near my bed. The cold surface of the egg chilled my hands. Over the days I tried everything with the egg, trying to awaken it. I tried to put it in hot water, I tried to heat it directly over flame and nothing worked. Nothing except for Chi. Just to test fate, I sent Chi to the egg. And boy did whatever inside like the taste of that. It drank my Chi like it was water. And I couldn't even stop it. I sent in a tiny stream of Chi. And the beast inside sucked almost my entire Dantian. Even that did not change the state of the egg though. It stayed the exact same. I tried doing the same thing again and again. But the same thing happened again and again. The egg took in all the Chi. But there was no tangible difference to see. So, I just stopped doing it and focused on the more pressing matters. Now, I took the pendant out and took it near the egg. What do I do now, system? I asked. System suggest pouring chi into the jade pendant. That always works for most items. The system said. I poured a little of my chi into the jade pendant. Immediately, it glowed. But unlike normal household items that could not withstand the pressure and power, 
this pendant did not break. Instead, it glowed, and I could see that the inscription of the dragon moved a little. The coiled-up dragon moved ever so slightly. I took a deep breath. Something was about to happen. The dragon moved even more and it looked lifelike. Roar. I felt a sudden pressure from the pendant. I let go of it and fell to the ground with shock and fear. The roar was like someone from high up. Someone majestic was looking down at me. Looking down at me like I was an ant. I felt powerless like I was just a small fry. It was a feeling that I never felt before. Whoever emanated it was powerful enough to kill me with a blink of an eye. I knew that much. The pressure still did not decrease. The pendant was in the air, floating. The egg also reacted a little. It started floating as well. I looked at this with wonder and shock. The system was right as always. Runes on the egg started glowing. It was a language that I did not understand. Perhaps when I grow stronger or when I go places I would come across the language. I could feel the pressure growing weaker second by second. I just did not understand what was going on though. The pressure was like killing intent. Felt like it was ready to murder. It was not a rousing presence. Rather than trying to awaken whatever was in the egg, it felt like it was trying to kill what was in it. It sure as hell was not a friendly presence. The egg suddenly dropped onto the ground. Then the pendant cracked. It became dust and fell onto the ground. I felt the pressure on me release, and I got up. I rushed to the bed to see what had happened to the egg. There was a change now, that was for sure. The runes that glowed became permanent, more deeply inscribed, and the egg was no longer completely smooth. Also, the color of the egg changed from a dull gray to a more vibrant silver. The egg was alive now. No one would mistake it as a rock. The egg also got a little smaller, and I could swear that it felt more comfortable to hold. I touched the egg and I felt a zap. A cry resounded through my ears. Felt like a cry of hunger. My hands felt cold, and I had a bad feeling that something was about to happen. Ouch! I felt chi flow from my dantian into the egg. It just swallowed chi like it was nothing. After reaching the foundation establishment stage, I could say that I had more than thrice, maybe even four or five times the chi that I had when I was at the peak of the chi condensation stage. And yet, all of this chi was drained within instants. The cry that I heard died down, and the egg that was in my hand started glowing. The silver glow felt even more prominent. Something was about to happen. Ping. Host is still at a low level to understand the information delivered to you. System shall act as the receiver. The entity within the egg wants you to pour a drop of your blood onto the egg. The system suddenly said, P. The egg was speaking? I asked, shocked. Yes, but the host is not powerful enough to receive the form of speech. Host has to enter the soul formation stage to truly use divine sense properly. The system said, I used whatever little chi that remained in my body to take out a knife from my spatial ring. I used it to cut myself. Took a little effort because my skin was tougher than it was before. But eventually was able to make a small cut. I poured a drop of blood on the egg. And then another. And then another. Nothing happened. Then, I heard noises from outside. What is happening over here? Where did I get the pressure from? Someone shouted from the courtyard. Go to the room. Is Arthur inside? Is he safe? I heard Pendragon Chen speak. Someone was going to enter the room. I turned around to hide the egg. But then, I looked at my hand. The egg was no longer there. Chapter 37 Where did it go? I looked around with shock, not understanding where the egg had gone to. It just disappeared into thin air. Where did it go? Atul Ia. What happened here? Are you okay? I heard Pendragon Chen's voice behind me. I turned around and looked at him. They were clearly worried. What happened, father? I asked, trying to keep the most innocent and naive face that I could without laughing. Something happened here. All the elders felt a powerful presence here. A monster presence. There might be a monster king here, and that monster king certainly is powerful. An existence of that level shouldn't exist in the city. I don't understand what happened. Are you okay though? He asked, clearly worried about me. Nothing happened to me, father. You might have sensed something else because I was just resting. I am very tired from the match that I had earlier today, so I am resting for the entire day. I cooked up a story. That is okay. You should rest. You have done well. Very well. He nodded as he turned around to leave the room. It shouldn't be from here. I could sense no residual presence of the pressure from here. It might be from another source. Check every corner of the house. 
I need to know if my family is in danger, and I need to know before I go to sleep at night. Pendragon Chen barked outside. I looked at this and shook my head. I did all of this and I had no idea where the egg even was. Was this all worth it? Maybe I would know if I had the goddamn egg. Ping. System suggests host to run a check inside the body. The egg is probably incubating next to the Danteon. It is a safe place for the egg to gain chi to supplement itself. The egg has already accepted host as a safe ally and is trusting enough to enter your error. Information is above user authority. Please level up to learn more. With a hurry, I ran chi throughout my body. Nothing felt wrong, until all the chi started being sucked in like a black hole right next to my Danteon. I could sense it. It was the egg. There was something inside of me. I took a few deep breaths. If I freaked out now, then everyone outside who was looking for the mess that I created would come back here and I would be in more trouble. I needed to calm myself and figure out what my next steps are going to be. I laid on the bed, looking at the ceiling. Just what am I going to do now? I did not need this complication now of all times. Is this going to screw me over for the martial gathering now? Am I going to lose? With this egg taking all of my chi right now, will I be able to hold any chi at all? This is too much for me to handle. I need to go somewhere to relax or something. I need to clear my head. I should go to some sauna or something to clear my head for now. I told myself as I headed out. I looked outside my room. There were men at every corner, going through every single part of the courtyard. In such a place, even if I wanted to relax, I would not be able to. I headed out. Where are you going, Arthur? It is dangerous. No one knows who caused this. You should not go out at such an important and delicate time. Pendragon Chen stopped me. But father, if this person wanted to harm me, then I would probably already be dead. You said that you got this pressure at the house. But I was in the house and there was no one here. This person had the best opportunity to cause me harm and didn't. I am going to be fine. All I am going to do is go for a little stress release. I said, what did you just say? You are going for a stress release? Just when I thought that you were going to change, you are going to do the same stupid things again. I will break your legs and drag you home if you say such stupid things again. Come back. Pendragon Chen barked at me. I looked at him with confusion. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. What is wrong with going to a sauna, father? I am just going to relax a little. Things have been a little difficult for me. I said, stating the obvious. You are going to the sauna? That is what you meant. Pendragon Chen laughed sheepishly. You can go then. You can go. I must have misunderstood you. He said, turning around immediately. I looked around, and the men were also looking away from me. It was suspicious. Where did you think I was even going? I asked. Well, you know, the same place that you used to go before, you know, the whole missing fiasco. Pendragon Chen said, stuttering. Wait a minute. He thought that I was going to the brothel? What the hell is wrong with the body that the system gave me? Only giving me troubles. This is so irritating. I shouted inside. I could no longer show my face here anymore. I quickened my pace and left the courtyard, heading over to the city. I stopped at the guards. Where is the city's sauna? I asked. Young master, the family has its own bath, if that is what you are asking for. The guard said. I do not want to be here. Every single person looking at me with weird eyes. I would rather go elsewhere and be more comfortable when everyone is not looking at me. I said, shaking my head. It is next to the... The guard gave me the directions and also said that there was no need for me to stay with the peasants. Apparently, there was a room reserved for the elite and that was where I should go. I also agreed with him. I also wanted to meet others who came from similar backgrounds. I wanted to see how they behaved and what the normals were for them. Chapter 38 Mysterious Girl I walked slowly and leisurely. This time, I had no need to hide my face and my identity. In fact, I needed it. I was no longer the idiot young master, but the dark horse of the Pendragon family. I could flaunt all that I had now. I smiled as I walked around. This really was therapeutic. I could do whatever I wanted, and until the martial gathering which was in a few days, rest and a little training were all that I needed. I stopped at a store. Something caught my eye. It was a pot, a big pot, but there was something about that smell that threw me off. It felt like this was an alchemist furnace, and it was probably better than even the one that the system provided me. I stepped in. The shop was mostly empty, except for the shopkeeper, and a girl who was looking around. 
She was not dressed luxuriously, but had a veil on her head, like the young lady from the Kai family. I could tell that it was not her, but this girl had a more mysterious aura surrounding her. Well, she was not my business and it was rude to stare. I shifted my gaze and crouched in front of the pot. I caressed my hands on the surface of the pot and looked surprised. There were slight bumps where the runes usually showed, but the bumps were not visible to the naked eye. This was something that I could only sense through the little roughness at the points of the markings. I raised my eyebrows and called upon the shopkeeper. Yes, young master? Is there anything that you require? He asked. Where do you get all your things? There must be some place that you get your stock. Where did this pot come from? I asked. We usually buy in bulk from expeditions, young master. Not the good stuff. The good stuff goes to all the major shops and auctions. We cannot afford to go against them. But for all those who want to try their luck, this is a place where you can do so. There are a few hidden gems that you can find, and I am sure that there is at least one here. Who knows? Maybe this pot is one. The shopkeeper smiled. What expedition did this come from? Where did they go? I asked. They went to the plains around which the ancient medicine spirit sect used to sit. It had collapsed a long time ago. There were many pill furnaces that were found, but this was thought to be a normal pot. Just one that someone used for their herbs to contain. Anyways, it was judged that this was not a pill furnace. It did not react to any of the usual tests. The shopkeeper said, All right, I will keep looking. Thank you. I smiled, looking at him. Ah, of course. He nodded and left, giving me some privacy. I looked closer at the pot. I was sure about my intuition. No ordinary pot would be used by actual alchemists to make pills. This was definitely an alchemy furnace. But then why did it not react to any of the tests? Maybe it was something to do with it being too high-ranked and having its own will? I was not sure. Looks like you are also an alchemist. I did not think that there would be a young alchemist in this city. I thought that I was the only one. A sweet voice came from behind me. I rose with shock and turned around. And it also looks like you are a skilled martial artist because I am sure that I would have heard you coming behind me otherwise. I said, smiling. That is just a side effect of an art that I am practicing. My footsteps are lighter and hard to hear. It looks like the furnace interests you. Do you wish to purchase it? The girl asked. Yes, I think I will. Now that I can see there is competition, I will not push fate. I will take this furnace, no matter the price. I said with a loud voice so that the shopkeeper could listen. There is no need to worry. This furnace is not fated to me. I already have one for me at home, and it is bound to last a long time. She smiled. I could see that she smiled through the veil. I wonder which monster would force such a young and beautiful girl to go to alchemy? It is too brute a task for such a noble person. I can see from your bearings that you are of a high clan. Why alchemy? I asked curious. Alchemy is only for those who are destined. I am destined. Hence, I took up the task. It seems that you are also destined, so you also took up the task. It seems that I recognize you as well. Aren't you Pendragon Arthur? The infamous young master of the Pendragon family? She asked as she took a step back. Oh, I know that I have a notorious reputation here. I don't think that I can get rid of it anytime soon. But do not worry. I am not the same person, and I am sure that you do not need to be defensive against me. I am not so much an idiot to try and molest a girl who is more powerful than me. I chuckled. And you know that how? She asked. Because I could not hear you coming behind me. I dare not say that I am the strongest in my realm, but I sure as hell have good senses. If you were at my level, then I would have sensed you. But you are far above my level. The only question that remains. Are you participating in the martial gathering? Because if you are, then I might as well quit while I am ahead. I know that I have no chance if everyone is at your level. I said, shaking my head. Do not worry, young lord of the Pendragon family. How about this? If you meet me at the martial gathering, then I shall do you the favor of quitting. But I want something in exchange. The girl asked. You want something in exchange? What is it? I asked. I have heard that you have a marriage contract with the young lady of the Bai family. I am indebted to the family, and it is their wish that you dissolve this contract. She said. Oh well, that was bound to happen anyways. The mistakes that I have made in the past cannot be wiped away. I do not want to force a girl who does not want to marry me into doing so. I would have done that either way so it looks like I got a good deal. Good day to you. 
I said, as I touched the alchemy furnace. I sucked it into the spatial ring and flicked a few gold coins at the shopkeeper. This should cover it, I said as I headed over to leave. You are very different from what I have heard about you, Pendragon Arthur. I look forward to meeting you in the martial gathering, she said. You know who I am. Is it not fair that I know who you are? I asked at the departing young lady. By Ziki. Chapter 39 Blue Feather Robe. By Ziki. Why does that name sound familiar? Wait a minute. Isn't that the girl who I was engaged to? That is her? Oh my god. You have got to be kidding me. I shook my head. By now, she was already gone. No wonder she wanted to break off the engagement. She can do so much better than whatever I was before. No wonder. Well, a pity. I muttered as I walked towards the bathhouses. I was in a need for a relaxing place. Where are you going? The baths are closed. There is a VIP inside. No one is allowed to go inside now. The guard stopped me. There is someone inside? This is getting outrageous. Who is it? I am the young master of the Pendragon family. I think that if you are stopping me, then I deserve an answer. I said, holding my ground. Who is it? You don't need to know. All that you need to know is that even the city lord will move aside for this man. So why don't you just go something else? And maybe at the end of the day the bath will be free for you. The guard said. Someone that even the city lord will move aside for? That sounds ominous. Why would someone so powerful come to the city here? This ain't some great city. I wondered. I continued walking until I reached a part of the city that I had never gone to before. This was the luxury part of the commercial district. Everything here was at least a few thousand gold coins, and some even reached that price in spirit coins. I looked around. The names of the shops made me snicker. Medicine Hall. Armament Hall. They might sound funny, but I was genuinely interested in them. I stepped it up and went into the armament hall. I wanted to find an armor for myself, one that was light and not visible. This seemed like the best place to get one without the Pendragon family knowing. The shop was full. There were people at every corner. The moment that I entered, I heard a voice beside me. How may I help you, sir? A young woman attendant was standing next to me. I want an armor? Earth rank. How much will that set me back by? I asked. An earth ranked armor will be about 100,000 spirit coins, sir. The attendant said, and her expression changed. Any business that was that much would certainly give her a huge commission. Show me the earth-ranked armor. I want to get one that is light and is not visible beneath the clothes. I said, of course, sir. It is right this way. The attendant led me deep into the shop, where the number of customers decreased considerably. She showed me five options for the armors, of which only one was what I wanted. So then, what is this called? I asked looking at the thin robe that looked nothing like an armor. It was just a robe, but apparently it was made with monster feathers and was extremely powerful. This is the blue feather robe. It is one of our expensive offerings, at 250,000 spirit coins. It is an earth-ranked medium-grade armor. The attendant said, Fine, I'll take it. Better this than nothing. I said as I gave her my Shansha card. She took the card and went inside. I frowned. I would rather that the money transactions happened in front of me, but I could not complain. It's such a big shop, I did not want to look like the petty guy. I waited. Soon enough, she returned. The transaction has gone through, young master. The robe is yours. Do you wish to pack it, or do you wish to wear it right now? The attendant asked. Well, it is always good to have some extra protection. Do you have a room where I can just put this on? I asked. There is one, sir. I can take you there. The attendant nodded and she took the robe gently off the case that it was resting on. She then went further into the shop and handed me the robe. Are you going to stand there? I think a little privacy is better suited when I take off my clothes. I said with a harsh tone. She was just standing there, like it was nothing. I didn't like that. Yes sir, of course. Forgive me for this offense. The attendant bowed and left the room. I put the robe underneath my clothes and started moving around to test it. There was a mirror, and indeed it didn't look like I was wearing an armor beneath my clothes. But there was one question that haunted me. Was it going to work? I took a sword and tried to cut the fabric of the robe. Nothing happened. I tried piercing it. Still, nothing happened. My worries were unfounded. These feathers were stronger and tougher than even my own skin. What kind of beast is able to have feathers so strong? 
and who the hell is able to kill such a beast? Everything that I do just reminds me how weak I am. I shook my head. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. I headed over to leave. The shop was still as bustling as ever. I headed over to the street and looked at both sides. There was nothing that interesting except an over-ambitious restaurant. One that called itself the best in the world. I shook my head. Although I got some things done, I was just unlucky today. I did not get to do what I wanted. Look who it is. The dark horse of the Pendragon family. I wonder how much you actually paid Pendragon Exion for him to actually lose against you. He has his priorities set, of course. With the admission into the Martial Gathering confirmed, he could just throw the match for some money. Or is it that the Pendragon family is so weak that two Foundation establishment stages could not even beat a cripple? I heard a voice behind me. Felt familiar and for some reason an intense rage came up. Chapter 40 Kai Yanlin I turned around and looked at who it was that was so provocative. I recognized the voice for some reason. The man who said this looked at me provocatively. I wonder, how did you survive so long in the cave? That too when you were injured. I thought that you would die in there. But it looks like cockroaches will always find a way to survive. Somehow. He laughed. The moment he said this, memories rushed into my head. I could see that I was talking with this man. And he took me to the forest for fun. Then, he stabbed me in the back and he threw me in the cave that I was trapped in. He blocked the cave with a boulder and left me there to die. Kai Yen Lin, you bastard. I growled. How could you call me that? I am the person who was supposed to ease your suffering. Now look. You have to keep living in this horrible world. He said, shaking his head. There were a few goons next to him, looking at me with eyes of contempt. What are you going to do now? Fight? Come on. I know that you want to fight me. Kai Yan Lin smiled. He raised his hand and gestured at me to come at him. I shook my head. The Kai family might be powerful and you might be the young master of the Kai family, but you are far from the actual representative. I met your sister, the actual young lady of the Kai family. She really is a great person. I think that the Kai family is bound to grow leaps and bounds in her discretion. But where does that leave you? Just a stupid henchman for the family. Looks like you are just a goon of the family. I said, shaking my head. Kai Yanlin's face turned ugly immediately. He looked at me with anger. I clearly struck a chord. He turned away with anger and started walking away. Look at that. The young master Kai Yanlin is nothing more than a coward. The moment that he knows that he is going to lose, even in a match of words, he runs away. I shouted, and everyone around looked at me and him. Some even snickered. You dare. Last time, we might not have succeeded. But this time it will not be so simple. His henchman growled at me. The Kai family will protect your young master. But seeing that you have threatened me, do you think that the Kai family will protect you? Will it be worth it? Think about it. He is just a young master, but his father is powerful to warrant protection. You two are worthless to the Kai family. Bark one more time and I will make sure that you are put down. I said as I turned around as well. You will also go to the martial gathering. There we shall see what will happen to you. I really want to see how you will fare. The whole city will chew you and spit you out. Kai Yenlin shouted at me, but I disregarded that. The martial gathering wasn't going to be that hard as long as I was prepared. I took a deep breath. Nothing was going as I had hoped. I came here for a nice and relaxing time, and all that I got was some fool who had succeeded in killing this body once before. It only helped worsen the problem. Oh well. Let us just go home and practice a little. I think that I should practice the fifth strike a little more. I thought to myself as I walked back home. I glanced at the bathhouse, which was on the way back. There was a huge path formed by two lines of men. Bodyguards, I assumed. I stopped for a minute. Maybe the man who was so important would come out now. I really wanted to see who it was. A small crowd was already beginning to form, and everyone was interested to see who would warrant such fanfare. I could hear that someone was coming out. There was an old man and the moment that he came out I saw his eyes. They glinted for a moment, and immediately, I felt a sharp pain in my forehead. Agar. I shouted with pain. I staggered back, trying to regain balance. Who is it that disturbs the great master? One of the bodyguards shouted, looking at the crowd that I was a part of. The crowd had no intention of protecting me. They split apart and I remained in the center visible to all. I could see the old man walking towards me slowly. 
He had a faint smile on his face. He walked up to me and tapped me on my shoulder. You have Zeke's scent on you. It seems that you are a lucky man, he said, smiling. You are her master? Are you an alchemist as well? Is that why they are treating you with such honor? I asked. Who do you think you are? Asking the great master questions. The bodyguard who spoke before stepped up once again. Calm down. This boy interests me quite a bit. The old man smiled. Yes, I am an alchemist. Looking at your hands, I think that you are also one of them. I heard that a few chi condensation pills and a few others have appeared in the city. I was curious, but to think that a child would be the one responsible. Truly marvelous. Do you also wish to become my disciple? I guarantee, no one will be able to touch you if you become my disciple. The old man smiled. Everyone around looked at me with envy. The bodyguard was shocked, his mouth agape. Getting an offer like this was once in a lifetime. But it was not meant for me. The path of alchemy is not the one that I wish to walk in this lifetime. I want to become a martial artist. Alchemy is just a side profession to help me out. I am sorry, but I will have to decline your offer. Maybe our paths will cross in the future once more. I shook my head and I tried to leave. You are Pendragon Chen's son, are you not? I am a little acquainted with your little situation. I may be able to help you out of it. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Chapter 41 Break the Engagement? I froze. He knew who I was and he knew the situation that I was in. That meant that he could help me. Thoughts raced through my mind. He can also help me get powerful, right? I will be able to grow a little stronger and will have a better standing among everyone else. I thought, are you stupid? The goal is to complete the world. That means that you have to become the strongest, kick everyone's ass, and then get back. That is the goal. If you start alchemy as a profession, then all that you are going to be is a lackey to someone else and helping someone else become the strongest. That is pointless. Come on. Just step it up and say no. It doesn't matter what the situation is. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Another voice inside of me rose. Two voices started fighting, and outside, my face looked complicated. I looked at the old man with hesitation. It looks like you are still not convinced. Well then, it just means that you are not fated to become my disciple. That is too bad. I wish you the best of luck in your martial journey. The old man shook his head as he turned away to leave. I nodded. As I turned away as well, the old man stopped. There was something else that I wanted to ask you. If you please, tell everyone else to leave. This is a private talk, and it is not going to be all right with all these people listening on. The old man looked at the bodyguards. Everyone, move right now. You do not want to offend the master. Just scatter. The bodyguard in the front stepped up and cleared the area. Soon, the place was empty, and there was only me and the old man left, with all of his bodyguards, of course. What is it that was so private that everyone had to leave? They already saw me say no to you for the disciple proposal, and that was a little humiliating on its own, no? So then why is this that private? I asked. Well, I did not want to humiliate you when I wanted to ask you to break your engagement with Ziki. It is a little embarrassing to ask, but that is the one thing that is tying her to the city, to this place. She has greatness ahead of her, and I am afraid that you are the reason that she is at a bottleneck. She is bound by the promise that her father made, and that saddens me. I will compensate you if you wish for that. The old man said, You really love her, don't you? As a master, I mean, she is lucky to have a master like you. But you do not need to worry. I already agreed to buy Ziki when she asked me earlier today. However, that proposal that you gave me, that you would give me something in return. May I be so bold as to ask for just a little bit of information? I asked. If your father has not told you who he is, and why you have people after you, then I cannot disrespect his decision. You should as him. The old man shook his head. You read right through me, didn't you? But if you cannot tell me that, then can you at least tell me how you know? I asked. That? Everyone knows. Every big powerhouse in the royal capital and the kingdom knows who you are and that you are his eye have spoken too much. But many know. You never cared enough. Who would have thought that you would change overnight? Truly a pity. The old man shook his head and sighed. Wait, what? Everyone knows. I asked staggering back. I have said too much. Anything else you should ask your father. He will have all the answers that you want. Maybe, if you survive the next few years, 
then you will find out the truth for yourself. But it is not my truth to tell, the old man said as he started walking away. But, I stepped forward, but I was stopped by the bodyguard. What do you think you are doing? How dare you try and approach the master without permission? I will not punish you because you are young and impulsive. Do not let this happen again, the bodyguard said with a harsh tone. By then, the old man was already quite a distance away, and the bodyguards were swiftly closing him in a protective shell. What the hell is happening? How could he just drop these bombs and leave like that? This is unfair. And the whole capital knows? Father is not going to say anything. I know that much. Why is everything happening now at this time? Everything is concentrated around the few days that actually mean something to me. I shook my head. I left for the house. I did not get the relaxing bath I wanted and only got stress added to me. My shoulders slumped as I walked towards the Pendragon family manor. Luckily, there were no more incidents that would keep my adrenaline pumping even more. I entered the manor and into the courtyard. By now, the courtyard was empty. Everyone had left, and Father was sitting outside, just gazing at the sky. He looked at me and smiled. Were you able to get some rest? Like you wanted? He asked. Looks like today was not my lucky day. I did not get to do anything at all. There was an old man who seemed to know you. I think that he was an alchemist. I could not enter the bathhouse because he was in it, and he was too important a guest to be disturbed. I said, shaking my head. An alchemist? I know a lot of alchemists. Well, better luck next time. But don't you dare say that today was not a lucky day. You are lucky. For you to win the match today was only because your opponent underestimated you. Do not expect the same to happen at the martial gathering. If this was yesterday, I would say that you should not keep your hopes high, but now that I see you at this stage, I will be honest. If you overestimate yourself like you are right now, then you are going to get crushed. Pendragon Chen said. Chapter 42 Assigning the Stat Points I nodded and went back in. I looked around the room. Plain as it was when I left it, there was no change at all. I sat on the bed and recollected my thoughts. Over one day, Way too many things happened at once, and I needed a breather. For one thing, the whole city would stop calling me the idiot young master because I beat Pendragon Exion in the matchup. That was a huge win. And then, for some reason, the egg that I had went inside of me and started using my chi to grow, I guess. Well, whatever it was, the egg was alive. I know that because it tried communicating with me, and I was just not powerful enough to understand what it was saying. Besides that, two people asked me to break the marriage contract. Although the girl herself was stunning, I knew that she was not meant for me. I was not planning on staying in this city for long. I did not even think that the royal capital was going to be the final stage. Maybe it would be the first big stage, but I knew that there were many other hurdles that I was going to come across. There was also that alchemist that asked me to become my disciple. This was the only thing that I was confident about. I did not need a master. I had a cheat system that was going to help me better than any master. If I wanted to learn any technique or learn how to refine any pill at all, the system was going to be there for me even when a master would be busy. I had no reason for a master to get stronger. I stretched my arms. System homepage. I said quietly. Username Gray Holton. Cultivation name Pendragon Arthur. Title Young Master of the Pendragon Family. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Level 8. Strength 45. Stamina 32. Agility 40. Cultivation Foundation Establishment First Layer. Luck 20. Skills Heaven Devouring, Medium Proficiency. Blue Dragon Spear, Medium Proficiency. Iron Body, Medium Proficiency. Alchemy, Basic Proficiency Foundation Establishment Level. Skill Points 5. Stat Points 25. All of a sudden, a light bulb in my mind went off. I still had 25 stat points that I could assign. With that, I could actually become so much more powerful than before. With every major increase in cultivation, my stats increased only by small increments. I had to try it out. System, other than strength and agility, are there any other stats that I can increase? I asked. Host has to level up to avail stat points on other stats. The system said. So that means that if I level up enough, I can use stat points for cultivation, luck, and stamina? I asked. The system did not respond. Stayed quiet, not even giving its go-to-error message. I shook my head and looked at the panel in front of me. I could give each stat 12 points each and one of them would get one more. 
or I could make them both equal at 55 and I could become well all round. Thinking back, compared to the others in the family, and everywhere else, I was the only one without an agility skill. I was slower than everyone else. This agility stat was the only reason that I was still competing. I could not let it lag behind. Put 10 in strength and 15 in agility. I said, adding 10 stat points to strength and 15 points to agility. Please confirm. The system said, yes. I nodded. The stats blurred, and the new numbers showed. Username Gray Holton. Cultivation name Pendragon Arthur. Title Young Master of the Pendragon Family. Level 8. Strength 55. Stamina 32. Agility 55. Cultivation Foundation Establishment First Layer. Luck 20. Skills Heaven Devouring, Medium Proficiency. Blue Dragon Spear, Medium Proficiency. Iron Body, Medium Proficiency. Alchemy, Basic Proficiency Foundation Establishment Level. Skill points 5. Stat points 0. Seeing the stat points that I worked so hard to accumulate just vanish in an instant pained me. But I had to confirm if it helped. I stretched my arms and headed over to the training ground to try out my newfound gains. No one stopped me, so I went to one of those training dummies that were usually hogged by one of the lackeys of Pendragon Kuin. I looked at it. It was not exactly excellent craftsmanship in the features, but it was sturdy enough to try my new stats on. I clenched my right hand into a fist and punched forward. The moment that I hit the dummy, it caved in and bounced right back out. I staggered back a little, but when I looked back at the dummy, I could see that I left a little mark where I had hit it. What did I do wrong? Isn't the dummy supposed to go back? Why did the stomach cave in? The punch is supposed to send it blasting off. Even those chi condensation idiots could blast it off. Why did the dummy cave in for me? I wondered out loud as I looked at the dummy with confusion. Your fundamentals are deeply flawed, child. I have no idea how you even won the gathering. To think that the representative of the Pendragon family is someone who does not even know how to punch. Truly ridiculous. I heard a sound behind me. I jumped forward with fright. Immediately, a spear appeared in my hands from the spatial ring, and I pointed it to the man who was behind me. How did someone sneak up on me all of a sudden? This was happening too many times. But when I saw who it was, my grip on the spear loosened a little. Old Tion? You again? You scared me. I heaved a sigh of relief. Chapter 43 Fundamentals Look at yourself. I don't know how you got so powerful when you do not understand even the fundamentals of a punch. You do not understand anything at all. You are just lucky, that is all. Some master felt pity and he gave you an art to learn. How many times is he going to do that? If you do not know how to actually understand how the art works, if you do not understand what you are supposed to do, then you are going to be worthless in the future. You might have slacked off the last 10 years, but you still have not passed your golden age completely. If you try and salvage what you can, then maybe you will have hope. Old Tian said, shaking his head. My fundamentals are flawed? That makes sense to me. I was only following the skills that were handed to me until now. I never was in an actual fight, and I even took that huge boost in where I started cultivating. It looks like getting the fundamentals right will go a long way in helping me in the future. I made a mental note. Old Tian nodded at me and looked at the dummy. But you are stronger than you were today morning. Trying out gains of a newfound strength, are we? I wonder how you get so powerful in such a small time frame. He laughed. I looked at him with a tense face. How did he find out that I grew stronger just by looking at the dummy? It made no sense. Well, I was just cultivating, and I felt a little breakthrough. I must be really lucky today. I wanted to test what it meant for me, and I rushed to the training ground to do that. I said hastily, trying to take his mind off of what he was thinking. Ah, we have a genius in our midst. The Pendragon family is lucky. I will leave you to testing your limits then. But do not forget. Your fundamentals are important. Rather than a person who has low proficiency in human-ranked sword art, sex, and any skilled person will know that whoever has perfect mastery in the basic sword skills will go farther in the martial way. Old Tian said, The basic sword skills? Where can I find the basic skills for spears? I asked with a rush. I wonder what is wrong with you. The building that you came to this afternoon, where you took your weapon. That is the building where the skills of the family are also stored. Is there something wrong with your memory? Everyone in the family knows this. He looked at me curiously. It slipped my mind. Well, I think that I will go there and take those for now. 
I have no need to learn high-skilled arts. I need to get my fundamentals right, like you said. I agreed. Well then, there is no need to go all the way back there. I am not in the mood to go through all the procedures of giving you a few skill books that everyone in the kingdom has access to. Here, just take these and scram. Everyone has a copy anyways, and I have no need for mine. Old Tian took out a set of books and handed them to me. He seemed to have a spatial ring of his own, and I looked at this with interest. Since when did a mere guard have a spatial ring? I knew that he was more powerful than he showed, and every time I encountered him, my suspicions were further confirmed. Thank you so much for this gift. I bowed down to accept the books. Don't sweat it. They are not that valuable a gift. Especially to someone who carried around a spatial ring like yours. I don't seem to recall anyone giving you this ring. Old Tian said, scratching his chin. I quickly jumped with fright and started running out of the training grounds. I did not want to get into more trouble. This old man had an intuition that was going to put me in huge trouble. Once I put a little gap between him and me, I opened the books that he had given me. There were a lot of diagrams, especially of bodies. Merdian points, postures, and the like covered the books. They were just like the skills that I learned, except that they focused on the more basic versions. The skills that I learned were a more complicated and profound version of this. But for anyone who was starting without the system, mastering the basics would be the best way to go. Ping. Host has discovered incomplete heaven grade skill. Does host wish to use five skill points to complete the skill? The system buzzed. I froze and checked the message again. A heaven grade skill? I was holding the goddamn fundamentals that everyone apparently held. Did that mean that everyone in the kingdom had access to an incomplete heaven grade skill? I struck gold because of the system this time. Five skill points? That is everything that I have, isn't it? But I can always learn more. Even the skills that I learn right now are not at the heaven grade, if I am not wrong. They are at most earth grade high ranked skills. Wait a minute though. Aren't the fundamentals of different weapons? What the hell is the heaven grade skill? Which skill will be made the heaven grade system? I asked. The skill that will be made will combine the incomplete aspects of the skill books that the host is holding. The skill made will be the ethereal weapon art. It shall be a combination of all the weapons. Host will be able to use all weapons if he achieves mastery of this skill. The system said. I hit a gold mine. I grinned. Every weapon. This was the biggest cheat that the system could give me so far. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Chapter 44 Ethereal Weapon Art. Completing Merger. 10%. 30%. 50%. 70%. 100%. Ping. Merger is completed. Host has acquired new skill ethereal weapon art. Suitable weapon for the skill is available in the shop. Ping. Congratulations on first use of the system ability. Completion of incomplete skills. Host will be given reward. I looked at the screen that popped up in front of me with excitement. A roulette will appear in front of me, and there was a giant red button that I had to click. As always. I put aside all inhibition and tapped the button with my index finger. The wheel started moving. I looked at the rewards. There were quite a few choices. The one that I wanted least right now was a skill. I did not want to learn too many skills and dilute the proficiency that I did have. If possible, I wanted a weapon or a pill that would help me increase my ability. Plop. 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 The wheel landed on an item. Ping. Congratulations. Host has gained new skill. Mind I. The system said. The source of this content can be connected to N0V3LB. N. Another skill? Damn it. And I thought that my luck was good. Fine then. What does the skill even do? I asked. Mind I. Skill allows host access to information about the people and items around him. The system said. It is basically an appraisal skill? I can use that? I can actually become rich with something like this. I nodded. The skill wasn't that bad. It was an auxiliary skill and not another fighting skill that I had to spend so much time practicing. I was okay with this. System homepage. Username Gray Holton. Cultivation name Pendragon Arthur. Title Young Master of the Pendragon Family. Level 8. Strength 55. Stamina 32. Agility 55. Cultivation Foundation Establishment First Layer. Luck 20. Skills Heaven Devouring. Medium Proficiency. Blue Dragon Spear, Medium Proficiency. Iron Body, 
medium proficiency.